I want to move to accounting, and I promise y'all should stick around because this, this is actually. I mean, I don't want to get you anxious. It's February. You got a little more time. Don't worry. There's still two months and a week or so, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And... <laughs> but we'll extend it again this year. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's possible. But uh, there, I mean, we come every year to visit Frank and. Uh, Part of the, I mean, we're his friends, but also we enjoy talking about this sort of stuff because it's really interesting, particularly when you have a good accountant, because they're able to tell you like the latest of what's going on. And this past two years now, like it's just important to talk about because this is yeah. like, this is not going to happen in our lifetimes again, hopefully, you know, like something like this, yeah. you know, is it's crazy. Like the government is facing this amazing crazy catastrophe and then they're still trying to collect all the money that they normally collect mm -hmm. and there are all sorts of things that people are applying for and you know how much of it's going to slip through the cracks how many are you know how many people are like oh maybe i can get by without doing this and you know or how many other people are like i gotta i got so many documents i gotta fill out in order to be compliant you know right. like it's it's wild mm -hmm. i mean what um tell us like Boy, I don't even know where to begin. Like, uh, so it, we're almost a year out from when it started, right? So, like, what was, you were in, you know, March, middle of March last year would be when it's, like, peaking, busy season for you. Like, what, what happened those first few weeks? I mean, was it still, like, full speed or did everybody just kind of, like, stop contacting you and it's, like, every person for themselves? Like, how did those first few weeks between tax day 2020 and when the pandemic, like, go for you? So that was a very strange time because it was going full throttle, like everything was going kind of normal. And then once that hit, it wasn't that people stopped contacting me, but people just like had this break. Like they just all of a sudden slow down and they're mm -hmm. like, oh, we don't know what's going to happen. Or like some of them, you know, I did fear the worst. Like some of them actually did get COVID. Mm. And yeah. like they just went MIA for like three or four months and all of a sudden they email me back in like July or August and they're oh like, oh gosh. yeah, I'm, I'm good enough to like do this again. And I was like, Oof. that's cool. Because at first I was kind of like, oh, where did these people go? Like how come they didn't give me the stuff yet? Yeah. And then I was like, oh, oh, they, they, oh. So like I didn't want to push. Right. So that's yeah. why I kind of let everyone go on their own speed. But it was very strange for me yeah. because it was in the middle of March and um, the kids school, like my kids school closed and I was like at home. And I wasn't working yeah. in the middle of March. And I was like, I, I, don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know what to do with myself. Like, I was like, I, I usually, I'm really busy there. And so it's strange yeah. that like, I was, I was at home playing with my kids. And we were all like, we don't, we don't know like what to do. But the yeah. kid can't go to school. So someone's got to be at home watching the kids. Right. Right. Um, I mean, that, were you able to compartmentalize that at all? And in, in so far as like, I'm... I can enjoy this time. I mean, like, obviously there's like the whole COVID anxiety, like period that everybody's experiencing, mm -hmm. but then it's like, did it feel like a break from what you were doing at all? Or was it all just like, I'm, my life is on hold right now. I don't know what to do. Th that's the one thing I wish. And I'm, I'm glad that me and my wife did talk about this. Like, that's the one thing I wish I would have went back to not let the anxiety be so overwhelmed that we kind of overlooked the fact that we had so much more time together as a family right like with my wife with my children with my mother-in-law like that was something that never happened during tax season for me ever right like, i've been doing this for 15 years i never like i never had that kind of time right but i think because we were so occupied with the fact that we don't know what's coming next like there was frustration obviously we were all nervous i think you know we got into some shouting matches with what's going on because they're like i'm not getting my work done i'm not getting my work done i have to do what yeah totally so that's that's kind of what was going on the first yeah. couple yeah. yeah i think it's hard just in general to like when there are so many unknowns like it's easy it would have been easier if we had like we thought oh maybe it'll be a two-week shutdown mm -hmm. and if we had known it'll be a two-week shutdown we could all just go home and take a nap for two weeks, you know, and get up and go back to work. And, but it was like, we'll try two weeks, but it might be a month. And then we get to a month and it might be two months and it might be three months. And like, yeah. you know, now we're like, oh, this is kind of just how we're living until we're not living like this. But I think like, yeah, it made it really hard for everyone to like enjoy the time. Yeah. Um, I also remember 
talking to you on the phone a couple of times because I made you some masks and we were going back and forth on, uh, you were helping me like find some toilet paper, pa toilet paper, <laughs> but also tax stuff. You were oh, also okay. helping me <laughs> with my taxes and you were also like suggesting some things like in case my business shut down or mm -hmm. if anything like that happened. And I remember you mentioning that like people were doing like all this extra accounting stuff that like they never would have done because like people weren't going into work so they had like plenty of time so they'd like call you and be like so like can you get back to me in an hour like yeah. i want to do this extra thing that like normally yeah. <laughs> so it sounded like you had like a lot on your plate too right. besides just like normal tax season <laughs> right so like it didn't really i think that's what a lot of people were like oh like they shut everything down i was like i didn't feel like i had a break at all because during all the uncertainty then that's what all this like loan stuff grant stuff started happening and everyone's like i need this for my grant i need this for my loan how do i apply for this how do i so then like that flood of like things came in maybe like a week or two after the pandemic hit mm -hmm. because that's when like everyone was like oh shoot like i gotta shut down my business i don't got any money how am i gonna like retain my employee so so right then they had like all these grants and loans which was great yeah, yeah. but i think that in the middle of tax season which is <laughs> kind of what's happening right now again but <laughs> that in the middle of last year's tax season was like wild for me yeah how did well i guess this is a two-part question how did the government respond in terms of like being patient or being giving forgiveness or whatever with that timeline and did it too is did it differ from federal and state like i don't i guess i don't really know how much you interact with the government in that way i know you submit the taxes but like that's kind of an impersonal process i guess but do they do they ta contact the accountants in any way to like let them know what's going on so there is a group that i'm a part of which is the aicpa i'm i'm always happy to plug for them they're like the top notch accountants in across the world across the us so mm -hmm. i'm in a group with i volunteer for them and then we do have a lot of contact with government reps in terms of what's going on yeah and during that time i think they didn't know what was so so they couldn't really pass the information because they didn't know mm -hmm. they extended i think they extended the deadline maybe one week or 10 days before so we knew on like april 2nd yeah like it was extended to july oh, wow and that's how late it was because wow. they didn't know whether they wanted to extend it or not because they didn't know the severity of this uh, pandemic wow and then when as it got that close to the deadline then they extended but it, it became a mess because the state governments didn't conform to the federal so like you had the federal government coming out april 2nd saying it's extended to july but all 50 state governments didn't uh, agree to that on april 2nd oh. like some of them agreed on april 5th some of them agreed on april 14th some oh of them agreed on, so like i had this like i was literally speaking to clients where my information was wrong right after i got off the phone and i'm wow. like oh my gosh i was like what the like i just got on this phone call for half an hour and then they changed the information saying like new york conforms now new york is extended and i'm like i just i just, uh. so then i started getting on phone calls with clients and i'm like as of my like speaking to you as 4 45 on this day the information is accurate right but yeah. like five o'clock it could, it could change oh yeah. my gosh do you, do you think that was a consequence of the administration that was in at the federal level like if we had had a, an administration that was taking a more proactive approach in leadership rather than kind of letting the states figure it out like do you think that was a consequence of the states having to figure it out themselves or do you think that it would have been like that you know in any instance where they were trying to delay i i felt like partially it was definitely the administration okay um that there was some uncertainty and there was confusion going on yeah, yeah. but even indirectly I, I i mean i don't want to get too political in this no no I, and i'm not trying just, to either yeah, yeah it's yeah. just that i i felt like just the beginning of that there could have been a little bit more clarity in terms right. of like how things were going to be handled instead of like trying to figure out everything on the fly yeah right. which made us figure out everything on the fly yeah right and i would think did you have anyone and, and don't answer this if you can't but like was there any instance where you were like filing extensions for people and then finding out that there was an extension like if it came all the way up to the end i can imagine like some people maybe being like oh well, i'm not going to be ready for april 15th and then you're like 
because you can usually just file an extension, right? So you're like we're doing that work, but then it turns out that isn't work you even needed to do. So you're like kind of wasting your time or? Yeah, at that point I was playing it very safe, especially for the people that, you know, I mean, I, God forbid, whatever happened to like some of them actually did contract COVID. Some of them had family yeah. marriages. So I just started filing extensions just for people just to be safe because they hadn't contacted me or because uncertainty of the extension. Right. Oh, so like, okay. yeah. So I mean, yeah. I was doing it both. I was like, I was yeah. like, I'm just going to cover all my bases here. I'm just going to start filing extensions and like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that responsible accountant. You're so responsible to your clients that you're you <laughs> I was, like I was trying to be. looking out for everyone. <laughs> Jet tax service, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Of all of the programs that are have developed as a consequence of this. Uh, and most of them will go away because it, it won't be required. Are there any that like you've seen that you're like, hmm, I wish that this could like stick around. Like I wish that there was something, you know, as far as like a tax break or just some sort of incentive or something that like, this makes sense. I wish it would be a thing. Or is it all just like, it just all feels like tragedy emergency like stuff? No, I think the industry ones, it's a little bit more peer to peer, the industry one, even though this is not like a government sponsored one or whatnot, but the peer, the peer to peer ones, I thought was some great things that came out of it. Like I, I support one for actors. I support one for restaurants. Like those two are big things for me. Mm -hmm. So, and those are great. I thought those are great resources because it doesn't rely on, you know, whether the government is giving funding to that. It's just, it's like peer to peer. So it's like the people that can give, you give and the people that need it, mm -hmm. you can take it. So I think those, you got access to the money a lot faster, less strings attached, and then it's directly related to your industry. So it's like, hey, I've been mostly affected because I'm, I'm in entertainment, I'm an actor or whatnot. You can get access to this because it's earmarked for actors. Mm. Gotcha. Um, the government ones, I thought was, it's a little bit more confusing, even though, yes, it's available. And I think that's going to really just be during this pandemic. Um, the PPP, the Pay Payroll Protection Program, PPP, mm -hmm. and then the EIDL. Um, mm -hmm. Those uh, the, the government ones are the big ones mm -hmm. um, that got funding, but it was I mean, <laughs> the pandemic started in March. I mean, some people weren't getting in this until like July. Right. So right. I, I just I I mean that I didn't understand how you could survive that long in a business if you're not getting this funding right. Right. for so long. And then even like this the stimulus checks or something like do you does that interact with like accounting at all? Like do you do you have any thoughts on like how they should be doing stimulus checks or is that just kind of like it's happening you have to pay attention to it you have to mark it down and it's like my my biggest the first thing that i think about for those because it's so few and so far in between i i felt like it was more of a formality mm. than actually help because i don't understand how you're i mean we live in new york city it's such a high priced like place a uh, high cost of living yeah and you're getting 1200 and then you're waiting 10 months to get another 600 so you have 1800 dollars <laughs> right for 10 months of living i mean yeah that's not even our rent yeah like, for one month right yeah so it's yeah. I, I think it's hard that i'm like i don't understand the point of this if you're gonna give us 1200 and then wait 10 months to give us another 600 uh, so you have eighteen hundred dollars for ten months, right? Um, it, yeah, it seems a little bit more like a formality a, a, instead yeah, of totally. actually a stimulus. Yeah, right. I mean, it definitely it feels political, not really a format. It's just like I I think they're calculating how much money they can give the common people in order to make them feel like they're getting something, even though like yeah. the you know the businesses are getting absurd amounts of money yeah and uh you know yeah. well it's kind of i mean the language is kind of funny it's not funny but it's like interesting language because i guess like when i think of just the word stimulus like i guess what they're doing is kind of a stimulus it's just a random chunk of money that's going out Injecting. at a random time it's like go spend it you know but it's not like what it's supposed to be is like Couple relief people, like yeah. it's supposed to be relief right yes. and it's not that like it's not acting as that but i guess they're not using the word relief they're using the word stimulus so it's like i wonder how much of that is planned to be like 
Yeah, well, we didn't say we were going to, like, help you. We said we were going to stimulate the economy. <laughs> well, the, actually, the technical term is EIP, which is Economic Impact Payment. Oh. Wow. That's the... That's, that's the real inside accounting info we need here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, right, they classify this as EIP. <laughs> so, okay, so yeah. that actually, that does sound more like yeah. what it I, I think that be. Right, the layman term, I think they're saying stimulus, so people understand. Otherwise, if you're like, oh, like, if I was talking to like my clients, I was like, "Oh, did you like did you get your EIP?" Right. They'd be like, "What? What? What?" Like how many numbers and letters? And yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, well. Yeah. So, how is this year different from last year so far? I mean, obviously, like we're all living in this world now where this has been happening for a year, so there's no shock, and I'm sure everything that would be related to the pandemic is now baked into your scheduling, but there's probably some new challenges that are happening right now, I would imagine. I mean, what is what is the landscape looking like so far? I, I, I hate to say this, but it, it, it seems like history is repeating itself. It's just mm. with different fears and anxieties. Mm. I think last year, it was a lot of unknowns around the pandemic and how everything was gonna shift. I think this year, it's more so, even though it's during the pandemic, but how the pandemic will impact the season itself. Meaning, mm. like I, I already been asking like my group in the AICPA and also asking the government, like what happens? Cause one of my coworkers became a close contact and she had to quarantine. Mm -hmm. So like I lost a coworker for like two weeks or whatever. And I was like, yeah, yeah, like if we lose someone doing the work for two weeks, like what happens? Mm. It's like, well, I, I hope we're, we as accountants don't get penalized for like, you know, 300 tax returns that we can't send out right? because yeah. of that. Yeah. So I think it's a different fear and anxiety. And on top of that, they signed in another bill to on December 27th, right before tax season for like the next round of uh, the EIPs and the PPPs and mm -hmm. the EID and all those. I mean, you can send a link for what they all mean. But like, <laughs> yeah, but they, they, they signed that in. And I was like, why are you doing this in the mid, like in the middle right. of tax season? Like right and, when everyone's about yep. to, yeah. For like someone like me, who's just compiling all my stuff right now, in a way it's better because I'm like, well, I'm on the computer anyway. But for my accountant, yeah. it's not Cause, great. Cause you're like, yeah, I know I'm on the computer anyway, but also like, I have no. to file your taxes. Like, yeah. Like, we're, we're, in other words, they they added on more deadlines for us to meet in this compressed tax season, and I'm like, right. like, uh. right. Yeah. And there's already deadlines. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any anticipation that it could be delayed again? Right now, we're having internal discussions. This is this is breaking me, but we're having internal discussions that um, we are like the CPAs for the most part. The general consensus we're voting for no, like mm. no extension, even though they may consider it. But if they do, it will be close to the deadline that they will announce that. Yeah. Sure. Um, but and, and and that's strategic. I don't know if you want to cut this out later, but like it's strategic because <laughs> they, want, later. <laughs> yeah, they, they want to make sure that people are not purposely like being lazy or delaying it because yeah. they know there's an extension. So they probably won't announce it till like the second, first week sure. of April. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. That's actually not a bad, I mean, I feel like a lot of people do wait till the last minute because you know you have until then. And yep. if you know you have till June. Then they're just not going to do it until, until yep. June. Yeah. Sure. So if they yeah. do delay it, no one's going to know until like the first or second week of April. Yeah. Mm. Have you observed that any increase, decrease, or same amount of auditing this past year? Like, is that a thing that uh, the IRS was laying low on this year or they're overwhelmed or? Well, seeing as how I think the last check I did was there were still like 50 million tax returns like back backlogged in terms of processing. Mm -hmm. So auditing for that is not even in the question yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. For the cases that were still outstanding, I think they automatically gave like extensions and a little bit of reprieve for yeah. because uh, even the government workers weren't going into the office. So they were not retrieving the mail that frequently. So they wouldn't even know yeah. like how to move the case along. So like, I, I think I, they were going in like one day out of the week and they were still only working from like 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. They oh weren't doing gosh, overtime. Right. So yeah. This it's, might not be an, a question you even know, but like, do they hire contractors to like go through that? Like, do they have a, a mechanism to ramp up to like do an audit process or is it just the same amount of staff that would be going through a backlog of 50 million? 
you know, tax returns. Uh, that I don't know. I don't know whether they would try to speed. Although now that they're moving past this initial pandemic wave, I think they are trying to ramp up. And yeah. also because you know the next wave of tax returns are coming in. Yeah. <laughs> tomorrow right? is yeah. the first day you can file a tax return. Oh wow! Yep. Really? Yep. Tomorrow's the first day. Oh. Huh. So by the time this comes out, everybody can you totally get on file it. Everybody, tax Jeez, returns. what are you get doing? <laughs> I had no. I for some reason I thought it was like January first every year. Yep. So mm. this year it's extremely delayed. It used to. Uh, it's usually around third week of January, oh, but okay. this year is extremely delayed because they have a backlog. Plus they're trying to adjust their systems to uh, accommodate for all the changes in this year's tax returns and some of it is related to the you know the covid the cares act things like that yeah okay how has your relationship with your clients changed maybe some ways that are worse some ways that are better in terms of not being able to have as much face time as you might normally like are you are you zooming or are you on your phone you just emails like what is what does your client interactions look like versus maybe how it did pre-pandemic? It's a lot of emails and phone calls. Yeah. Um. I think yes. I've I, I've learned I've learned how to use like Google Meet, <laughs> Facebook Video, Blue Jeans. Like yeah, yeah. There's there's a whole lot of yeah. There's a whole lot of different. I was like, man, I'm using all these different Zoom. Yeah. Wait, I'm, I can't forget about Zoom. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm using a lot of different Skype. What's <laughs> so your throwing, favorite? I think the one that probably still Skype right now because oh. I used because Skype was uh, something I was familiar and I used pre pandemic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think after the pandemic, I was using more Zoom. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so Skype and Zoom. I've never even heard of Blue Jeans. No, yeah, me Blue Jeans. Are, yeah, that one's not as common. I think I used that for a couple clients. But okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's funny how Zoom has become just like as ubiquitous as like Google. I'm gonna like get on a Zoom. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I had never heard of it until March 15th or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, they were really positioned to do good. Yeah. Yeah, good for them. Yeah. Yeah. But so, yeah, so a lot more, uh, I mean, would you, what's like the percentage, if you could give a percentage of like people that used to come in that now you're just doing it all like over the phone? Like, I would say it's a pretty big, I mean, because we're still in this tax season. So yeah. a lot of the people hasn't. Like they haven't reached out to me to see what they want to do, but yeah, I would I would say there's a big shift. There's already a shift that I noticed because they email me and they're like, oh, so what's going on? Like what's right. going on for this year? Because I don't know if you're going to be accepting in client meetings or yeah. whatnot. So yes, like I would say it's probably going to be more than a fifty percent shift. I yeah. don't have the numbers yet, just right, because, sure, just yeah. kind of you know yeah. from your head. But yes, it's going to be a big shift. Yeah, if you had to give a pitch. To anybody that's watching right now, right? You're going to sell yourself. <laughs> so, you know, they're on TurboTax or some other nonsense, and they think they can just do it themselves. You know, what is your selling point for having, not just Franklin, the greatest accountant in New York City, <laughs> but just having a personal accountant in general? Like, what are, what are the advantages? I feel like the biggest thing that comes to mind is peace, peace of mind. I think when you're using uh, out-of-box software and I think you have to go through these questions that may or may not make sense to you, um, you're not sure. I think you're not sure whether it's done correctly or not. And uh, for some of the people, I don't. I, I, I try to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. I do give them credit. Like some people are like, I'm sure this is, oh, it's, it's cool. Like I don't, I don't need to say like, oh, everyone should come to like have a personal account or anything like that. Some people it is like, they're like, oh, I double checked everything. It's correct on terrible tax. That's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the biggest thing is you have peace of mind. And also you have someone live and consistent to go over to make sure things are right and to explain. Um, because when you do TurboTax, like, yes, they have these live, actually, they try to hire me. Oh. Yeah, they have, yeah, they try to hire me. And they're like, oh, you should be like one of the live CPAs that works from home. So when people have some issue, like they can reach out to call me. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But then, right. But the issue with that is you get different people. Right. Like you only have certain times you could talk to them. Right. I think they give you kind of more structured answers because they can't go into a lot of, so. Right. Right. It's, I think it's more of a personal relationship. And then you have peace of mind knowing that, hey, things are done right. Yeah. Um, versus you're kind of guessing and hoping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I would add to that and say, I think, yeah, I, I, I would like second everything you said. And then also, I guess 
I've never used the TurboTax, so I can't speak from personal experience. But I did try to do my taxes once, and I got a big fine, and the fine was more than I pay you to do my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, financial, you know, whatever, checks out, that works. But also, I think even like having the conversation with you about my taxes, you bring up things that I wouldn't even think to ask. And you know me year to year, so like you can see like, well, what are you doing with your career? And what's, you know, have you, I remember you mentioned you might do this thing last year. So like, did you do that thing? And I'm like, oh, I did do that thing. Do, can I expense that thing? And you're like, uh, yeah, you can. <laughs> and I'm like, great. And I think that's the kind of thing that like, it's like having, like you wanna to go to the same doctor every year for your physical because they notice the differences with you. It's like mm -hmm. the same, I'd say it's a very similar thing from the from the client. I was gonna say from the patient, yeah. <laughs> from the client's perspective. Yeah. Um, and you have much easier taxes than I do. So what do you think? Uh, yeah, my my taxes have typically been fairly easy, but it is nice and useful for me insofar as it puts me in the headspace of how am I using my money? How can I project I'll be using my money in a few years? And what is the best way to position myself? And that's worth, uh, you know, paying, especially even like I'm, my taxes aren't complicated. So the amount I pay you is not that much, but it's still worth being able to have that conversation. Uh, and uh, it feels nice to say, well, my accountant says this. You know? <laughs> yeah. Wait. Yeah. I also think for, for, you know, for anyone listening or watching that hasn't done the getting a personal accountant thing, it, I think it sounds like more of like a highfalutin, like luxury. It sounds bougie for like sure, bougie, but it's not, but it's I think not. It's, it's actually, we all have to do our taxes, right? Mm -hmm. And so let's make yeah. sure we're doing it right, yeah. is all. It's like, again, like the doctor thing. Like it doesn't sound bougie to say, oh, I go to a doctor at an office, but it's like, that's basically Depends what we're who doing. You are, we're I just guess. not going. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're, yeah. I'm it's joking. Like, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Having a doctor that I go to every time versus like going to the ER for my checkup or something. Well, I mean, it, you know, and it's, <laughs> I mean, it is, I do think it is a thing that we should address insofar as there is a kind of a maybe class barrier. I don't know. And, and I think there's two schools of thought, right? It's like, on the one hand, taxes should be easy enough in theory that anybody can just do them, right? right? Especially if the government already knows how much you owe. Like, why is it so opaque? Yeah. And uh, and on the, I mean, on the other hand is kind of like what, what my philosophy is, what I said just a second ago, which is that, you know, I like the idea of having a conversation about these sorts of things. Like, yeah. I believe in the idea of paying taxes because I do think that it's good that we all contribute money to a common thing. And then there's all these services that get, you know, um, fueled as a consequence yeah we can have all these social programs that we're interested yeah. in you know, roads supporting and, each other. you know libraries yeah. parks yeah. Yeah. schools yeah. schools yeah. yeah and like granted like none of those systems are going to be perfect you know like all of those things are going to be run in ways that like would be better run if it was smaller or something but that's just the nature of it there's going to be inefficiencies right and so i do think ultimately it's nice that there is a, a class of people uh, accountants that are, you know, invested in that sort of thing. And then we can go to them and have these sorts of discussions, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And at the same time, I do recognize, yeah, like you're saying, I think that it's not accessible for everyone. Like we're saying, you know, we're saying it's, it's affordable if you're making like minimum wage and you're a single parent or something. And like, maybe it's not affordable. Maybe you like just have to do it yourself. But there and, are government, I mean, there's free taxes in the city, right? I mean, you know, mm. I'm oh, sorry to interrupt. Yes. Yeah. I didn't know, I didn't know yeah. that. That's a good thing to yeah. share. I mean, well, it's probably not, I don't know if you'd be able to get the same person every year. Maybe you could. I've never done that. Yeah. But, you know, there there are those opportunities to, uh, it's just that the, I think, uh, you know, there there's kind of a, just like there's a fear of doctors, there's a fear of paying your taxes, mm. which is just kind of the fear of unfamiliarity. You know, the idea of like, I don't know how to navigate the system. E I, even so far as I don't know, like, I feel anxious about going to the person that can help me navigate the system, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I think ultimately on the balance, it's cool that there is this class of people that exist to help figure it out, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The, I mean, 
there's also like the the very uh, people that are very affluent that find a way to take advantage of every possible loophole, which is the flip side. It's like kind of like lawyers, you know, lawyers defend you and they can also, you know, Acquit defend you. people that are indefensible, right, you know? Right. And yeah. And, and the, the people that are super, super affluent are the ones that can like really benefit the social programs that help the people that aren't. And so, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I know in other countries, um, like I think in places in Europe, they just, the government just sends you a bill. Yep. Have you heard of this? Yes. Yeah. So uh, when I was studying abroad in France, I was speaking to some of the students and whatnot there, and they were saying, like, there's no individual tax returns at all. Wow. Like, yeah, once you get your paycheck, they did all the they did all the work for you, and then you just get to keep what's left over, and that's it. Like, yeah. at the end of the year, there's no tax return, there's no reconciliation, nothing. What about for someone like me? Like, would I even be able to exist in Europe? Like, yes. the way that my... <laughs> yes, but I think, and, and just specific, again, this is this is not, don't quote me on any of this information, it's been yeah. a little outdated, but like, yeah, I was speaking, I actually have clients that were in France that started a business, and they stopped, they, they had to come here because the taxes were so high, mm. like, it was like something like 50 to 60 percent. Mm. So yeah, like you make a hundred bucks, you're only keeping like forty. Right. So it's it's wow. a hard right. It's hard, but the ben but the flip side is like I mean the benefits there are amazing. Like right. you know right. you you get unemployment for actors. You get like so you get like stimuluses all the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah. that right right. But it's just that when it comes tax time, yeah, it's it's a lot harder because even though they do the work for you, that they take out a huge chunk. Right. So. They probably don't also list every single expense that like I when I go through and do it, they they might not have access to like every single thing I've yep. been able to expense yep. or mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yeah. But yes, I would say that the US the, the tax system is much more complicated than a lot of the places that I visited. Like, you know, the ones I'm coming off the top of my head are like Taiwan and like uh, like Europe and things like that. And I was like, yeah, it's much more simple there. It's not as overly opaque and complicated as it is here. Yeah. Right. Right. And that's, I mean, for as long as it's like that, having an accountant that can help you navigate that really, really complicated system is really awesome. Yeah. What was it like in, do you remember any of the specifics about the Taiwanese system? Like, is there... Oh, the best thing about them, because my brother-in-law, I was actually, funny enough, their tax, I think their taxes are due in May. Uh -huh. Like, I think end of May, June. So I actually, that's my most down season. So I visit Taiwan, like, usually in May, June. Yeah. So I was actually uh, kind of looking at a tax return with my brother-in-law one because he was like, I got to get my tax return in. And I was like, this is so strange because this is, like, after tax season for me. <laughs> but, like, he was, like, all, like, freaking out about his tax return. And he was like, I got to get all my information together. But yeah. the, the, the nice thing about that is, like, throughout Taiwan, I believe, they have a similar tax rate. Mm. So like not like us where it's like oh New Jersey is like six percent and then New York is not so for them it's kind of like a flat tax rate for like uh, where they are okay so that's why it's easier for them to be like okay I live here and here like I worked in two different places in Taiwan but you're still getting kind of taxes it's not like oh I have to file a separate state return with a credit transfer and additional like, it's like mm. it's yeah. right yeah. interesting I wonder that I I can't imagine that everywhere in Taiwan is the same level of economically, like, you know, they're not economically equal, right? There have to be areas that are not as affluent as others. Is that correct? So like, would that, would that negatively impact areas where it, you know? Although I, I would say that income taxes, and this is something I say generally, like income taxes is one aspect of how government raises money. So like yeah. the, in the other areas, they may have other ways to raise income yeah. outside mm -hmm. of income taxes mm -hmm. yeah and you know i think a reason for them to do that is it's more consistency on a tax return so it's not so much confusion as it is like oh if i worked in three states and i live in this state I like see. what is that my right. so yeah so right. for it's them it's like i worked in three places but it's like okay i'm still gonna get like one w2 or whatever it is. right yeah. okay. that's actually speaking of that that's one question that I wanted to ask. Uh, I've been hearing that people, because everyone's working from home now, is that a weird thing that's happening for people in, especially New York City, because we have like different, so many different tax brackets and then like people live in Long Island and commute in and people live in Westchester and yep. New Jersey. Is that a weird thing that you're helping people navigate? Yes, that is one of the biggest things that are, and actually that's part of the questionnaire that I think you had, yeah. So, you <laughs> see that, yeah. so that is one of the, right, that is one of the biggest questions during 2020 um, because of people working remotely and how that factors into their taxes. And 
usually for the ones in New York City, it benefits them yeah. because wherever they're going, it's got to be a lower, like usually it's a lower tax rate than New York City. So, right. mm. um, yes, like if you live somewhere over six months, then yeah, you can consider that your primary residence. And then that way you can kind of maybe save taxes if you ended up working remotely in a lower tax state. Oh, interesting. So interesting. Mm. So is New York City itself going to potentially be bringing in less income this tax season than From, normal because a lot of people are like paying only in like, uh, Pennsylvania like, or whatever instead of New York City? Potentially, yes. Okay. I, I, I think, right, the, the thing to keep in mind is I'm just specifically talking about individual income taxes. Gotcha. I think there's like, there's like corporation, <laughs> there's sales tax, there's a lot of other things that they come, right. Other, yeah. But like, yeah, specifically just for individual income taxes that they bring, yes, I believe that will be lower this year because a lot of people have moved out during the pandemic and then they're working remotely. So they're like, hey, I don't, I'm not going to pay New York City taxes if I was like in Tennessee right. for right. the whole year. Yep. Right. Cool. Interesting. Interesting.